Hello my friends, and let us start our journey with Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition for the PC. Oh. Okay, let's see. What kind of character do we want? How about we make a female this time? And by this time I mean it doesn't really matter. Um What do I want to start out as? Uh, I don't even know what I'm going to be wanting to build, generally. I don't know what my build is going to be end game at all for PvP. If I do some PvP with this character, I am, yeah, I'm generally not good at the PvP, PvP in Dark Souls. But I would like to PvP, so I don't want to completely screw up my character, though that's kind of hard to do. With a uh, elemental weapon, you can pretty much PvP, no matter what your build is, as long as you can use it. Uh, so what kind of builds are we looking for? Thief could be good, maybe. Yeah, tiny buckler shield. Um, hmm. Elevens all around. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Level six though. It's the highest level to start for class-wise. Lowest is pyromancer. Um, good attunement though. Twelve, uh, fifteen sorcery though. Uh, I kind of want to start Pyromancer because you start out with the Fireball. It's never bad to have. Some people start as Cleric because you get the heal. Uh, but I'm not completely sure. So, let's go. Uh, do I'm, uh, it's kind of hard because I'm trying to think. At the same time, I'm thinking about like hmm, starting sets. But I also think, what am I going to build into, and what would be the best to start so I'm not wasting levels? Uh, hmm, warrior, knight, that'd be high. S uh, hmm. Faith, eleven, intelligence, nine. Yeah, hmm, might be good. But starting out with Pyromancer is good. Okay, we'll start out with Pyromancer. Master Key, and I will, sh of course, show you why. So, in case you're new to Dark Souls, it's a game that came out on uh, 360 and PS3 last year, almost a year ago. And I have it for PS3, and it is quite fun. So that's why I'm not blind running. I can't really blind run a game because I already know the game, you know. But that's how it goes. You can join me on my adventure and we will have fun times because I'm still not going to be that good and we will lose horribly. Though I will know where quite a bit of the things are. I'll try not to spoil anything though if you're watching. Well, I'll kind of be spoiling it as I do it, but I'm not going to spoil anything ahead of time. Sort of, I'm going to try not to talk about anything, I guess, ahead of time. Uh, sure. Yeah, that's, that looks good. We need to name our character. What are we thinking here? Um, Carter, because why not? I don't know. Ah, very Stargate of me, but that's fine. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire, came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark.
then from the dark they came zombies and found the souls of lords within the flame Nito the first of the dead The witch of Isolin and her daughters of Chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, and his faithful knights. Praise the sun. And the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords. Even now, there are only embers. The man sees not light, but only endless lights. And amongst the living are seen carriers of the accursed dark side. And there's the intro, which explains some of the backstory for the world. Most of it that I can't remember because I didn't play this game for story when I played it. Yes, indeed. Yes. The dark indeed. sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate. I've always wanted to be a prisoner for the rest of time. Oh god. I look so horrible. Alright, my friends. And now we start the game. I welcome you to Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition on the PC. We shall have an epic adventure, my friends, into death and despair. Because even though I play this on console, and I would like to consider myself okay at this game. I'm not the best. Most of the bosses can probably still kick my ass. And uh, I'm not good at PvP at all. For some reason, I don't think you can backstab with this weapon. Oh, nope, you can. There we go. 
I don't think you get any extra for backstabbing. So, uh, as I was explaining, this game came out last year on the consoles. It's a spiritual successor to Demon Souls, made by the same company, that was only on PS3. Very good games. They're always they're critically acclaimed, basically, for their difficulty and how harsh they are. Which, you know, is good. These games are really fun, really hard, good RPGs. Some of the best games I've ever played, so I don't know. If you come to watch my Let's Play for a complete run through, grabbing every item, uh, good PvP experience at the end, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. I'm going to fail so hard at this game in certain parts. But, you know, that's, uh, what else do you expect? We're here for the journey. And this journey will be an epic one of failure. I will do some PvP later on for sure. I've explored most every area because, as I said, I played it on PS3. But there's new areas now, and I have no idea where they are. I don't know really much about them at all. So that's going to be the best part of this Let's Play, I think, is figuring out those new areas. And here we see the first boss, the Asylum Demon. Uh, as it stands now, he's a pain in the ass, because for my weapon, I only have my little broken sword, and it only does 4 to 6 damage. I think 6 is the max. So, you can spend 20 minutes fighting him, and you get a, a great axe from him, I want to say, or an axe, if you beat him with this little sword. But that sucks to do that. And I don't want to sit around and waste 20 minutes in this Let's Play fighting him for that weapon. It's something I'm not going to get on this character until New Game Plus. So. Shield. Who needs a shield? Hello, it's an arrow. Oh god. What? I already know how to do that. And I have it for uh, PS3. I'm actually using my PS3 controller right now for the controls. I hear the keyboard and mouse controls are not the greatest. Now that I will equip. I'll equip that even though I'm not going to use it. I don't have my pyromancy glove yet, which is right up here actually. I want to backstab you. There we go. Delicious and dead. So how this is going to work is I'm going to split up this Let's Play into parts. And the parts will be area specific. Oh yeah, you can't get that yet. So this first part is, of course, the Undead Asylum. The first area in the game. And some miscellaneous stuff near Firelink Shrine, which is the area right after this. Screw you, my friend. Screw you. And why I'm going to do it in this way is because if it's just a part with just the fire link tr or just uh, the undead asylum, uh, you. You know how it'd be a very I'm short part. I'm done for. I'm afraid. I'll die soon. And then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I are both undead. Hear me out. Sure, I'll hear you out. And I'm only doing this for you guys, so you guys get some story. And so I'll try not to talk over NPCs, but even if I do, there are subtitles. But you can curse me in the comments section. Stop talking over everything. I have failed in my mission, but perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There's an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. And thine exodus from the undead asylum maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient yours. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, that's a very strange oh, and really specific oh, thing for a family saying. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. Oh, and this. 
Yeah. No one who has bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now. And thank you. Why can't you give me like your sword or your armor and your shield? And now he's going to die. But I don't get the souls from him that way. Oh, no, I still do. Okay. Make a rest at the bonfire for no reason. Um, and there's two ways to do this. I'm pretty sure you can go back through this door. Nope. Okay, never mind. There's only one way to do this. I thought you could go back through that door and fight him head on like this. Which, I mean, wouldn't be the worst idea. But I guess since this is only the tutorial area, they don't want you to do that. Oh god, I forgot everyone was spawned. So in Dark Souls, you save if you quit the game or when you rest at a bonfire, basically. Ah! And the bonfire is that fireplace thing that I rested at. And when you're there, your healing item, your SS flask, they refresh. I only have five. If the bonfire is a stronger bonfire, you get more than five, which is nice. But uh, every time you rest and refill your health potions, all the enemies respawn too. Which makes the game slightly difficult if you're trying to heal up and go through an area and then you have to heal up when you get to the end of it because you took too much damage or whatever. This game is very much about very much about um, how do you say trial and error I would suppose. As you go you basically learn the areas you're going through. You have to remember where enemies are, have to remember enemies attack patterns their styles of attack, you know, like this guy. When I first played this game, he owned me, but now I remember what he does because, well, I played the game before. So he's not so hard for me because I remember his attack pattern. Nope, don't you flask. And you can't proceed through here yet, I'm pretty sure. Yep. You can proceed through there when you come back to the asylum. So, well, it's kind of an open world RPG. As soon as I get out of here, I can basically go anywhere in the world. I'm not really equipped to go anywhere but one specific area, basically. But you can go anywhere. So basically, your goal right now, well my goal right now, there's two bells I have to ring. There's a bell on the top of a church, or the upper bell, and then there's the lower bell. And you can go to either one of them first, you don't have to ring them in a specific order. The order most people do it is the top bell, and then the bottom bell. Because to get the bottom bell, it's way more complicated, well not really complicated, it's the same sort of thing, but uh, it's way harder just because of the areas. Because when you're first starting out, you really don't know how to go through these areas. And you're probably not good enough level to survive if you make mistakes in these areas. Kill the asylum dude. Okay. I don't know. It's easier to use your little weapon, do 144 damage, than it is to do 4 damage. Is this backwards? Yep. We'll heal up just because we can. That's what the guy was talking about, though. He's like, and you must ring the bells of awakening or whatever. And since this is my first character on the PC, and, you know, I'm just going to go through it the normal way, basically. Well, except, well, there's one exception. Well, I don't know. I guess it's an exception because I know about it. There's one thing I'm going to do. Running around Firelink Shrine. 
That's why I took the master key. Only That's my thing. In the ancient legends, it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Fly away on the bird. Fly away. Lordran. Snuggly the Crow, as she is called now, because that's her name. Here we are, the main hub of the game, Firelink Shrine. I'm actually going to rest here because that'd be a good idea. But I'm not going to level up yet because I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be building. Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. But too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are actually two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below. In the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both, and something happened. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on. But I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> so, yep, he confirms what I was saying. There are two bells. Ah, you're good one. Going hollow could solve quite a bit. I don't think he says anything else. Mm, what? Well, there are a few ways to go about it. Collect it bit by bit from corpses. Or you can butter up a cleric and get yourself summoned. And the quickest way, although I never do it, is to kill a healthy undead and pillage its humanity. Coveting thy neighbor is only human, after all. <laughs> <laughs> what? Don't try it. Yep. So, that's a guy who's just supposed to help point you in the right direction. So, as I said, there's two bells. There's one up there. There's one below us, which you can't see from here. You can't see either of them here, so... Uh, you can go down to Blight Town right now. Um probably have to have the master key to get there right away. If you know what you're doing, well, no. Hmm. I don't think I'd even have the equipment, even though I know what I'm doing, to go through Blight Town, so... Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. If not, I'd prefer oh, to whoops. keep a distance, if possible. I skipped his name. Hello there. I realize that I have requested that we retain our distance. But I also want you to know that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. Ah, uh, go away message. Oh my, you again. Oh, I know. How about this? I have to awake my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Would that please you? Sure. Very well. Then first, a covenant with the gods. Nah, I don't have a covenant, so it doesn't really matter. A covenant is basically like an allegiance or a faction that you can join. Now, let me share. Only their ultimate effectiveness. And then, if you join his covenant, the Way of the White, I believe, you get access to buying these from him. I don't really need any of them. I'm not going to use any. I don't even have the faith to use them. 
You can't learn a Jester from him. That's always good. Uh, yep. Come again. The effectiveness of the teaching. So I just joined his covenant, the Way of the White. It's the first covenant you can join because it's literally right there. And it's also, I believe, the only one of the only covenants that you can join. That if you abandon it or leave it for a different one later, there's really no ill effects. Except, well, you can't buy miracles from him again unless you rejoin, but that's fine. If you're a faith-based character, then he's pretty good. You can buy heal from him, force, you can buy... Well, I showed it there. So I can't remember what all of them were. Um, chest. I forgot what was in the chest. Oh, it's open anyway. Hmm. I forgot what this chest was for. Hmm. Alright then. Uh, now for the little things here and there that I'm going to do around Fire Link Shrine to finish this episode up. The easiest one, of course, I think to come up here. Drop down to this area. I actually found this my first time playing. So it's, it's not really anything hidden too much. I mean, if you explore around, which you should probably do anyways, explore every area, you're going to find this stuff. Just some general items to get you started on your way. Homeward bones, always good. And here is one of the ways you should not go when you first start out. Because you can't kill these skeletons. Unless you have a holy weapon. But I want to grab some of this shit anyway. Yeah, I won't be able to grab binoculars. I don't want to get stuck back there. There's another item over there, I think. But I'm not going to run over to grab it. Oh, there's the crow. Let's see what other items are around here. We got this. Still follow me, huh? Yeah, well, follow me off the cliff. Oh shit, I didn't actually mean it. And also, Bonfire resets enemies. Which, well, they'll, they will, they they will respawn, which is part of the resetting. That's basically what it does. It respawns all enemies. I'm going to reset them to whatever, their normal condition. Um, that might be it. I think that's all we can get from Firelink Shrine right now. I don't think we can grab anything else here until later. But there's still one more thing I'm going to do before this episode ends. Uh, can't reinforce flask. That makes it to where you can hold, or your flask um, heals you for more. Which is good. And you need to get a certain type of item, a firekeeper soul, to use that. And firekeeper souls are souls of people that maintain the bonfire. So if you were able to kill her, she would have a soul for you. But then you want to be able to upgrade your flask right there, so that's not good. Now, generally, you wouldn't come down here. This is an area for quite a bit later because of the enemies. So if you if you were to start adventuring over there into these watered-down ruins, these flooded ruins, you would find ghosts. Can't really fight the ghosts yet. That's no fun. So this is bad juju area. There's only a specific reason why I'm down here. And it's also the specific reason why I took the Master Key. Other than... Well, the Master Key, out of everything you can grab, is the only thing really worth anything. Let's see, it's in here, I believe. Yep. 
And that uses the master key. Valley of the Dregs. Another place you don't really want to be until later because everything will kill you. This is the shortcut to the back of Blight Town. Yeah. Needless to say, I'm not going to Blight Town right now. I don't have the equipment for it. I'm sure some people that are better at this game than me could probably do it, but... Actually, I have 2,000 souls. I probably should have leveled up before doing this, but... It's okay. 2,000 is not that bad. I can lose 2,000 and not feel bad about it. So the reason why I come down here is that you can take the Master Key. There's a good... Well, it's a good starter weapon that you can get right here. If you can take it without dying horribly. There we are. Sword and the shield. And then you die. As to be expected. But I got what I came down there for. <laughs> ah, okay, so. Start back up here. And when you die, you lose all your souls. Which is the number in the bottom right corner. Your souls is basically your money, but you also use it to level up. That's why I said I probably should have leveled up before I ran down there. But, yeah, it's fine. I'm not too worried about it. And I don't think I can use the sword right now. Nope, I don't have the required faith or dexterity for it. Tis disc. It's fine. It's, um... It's good if you're a faith build. I wanted to grab it anyway, just to have it. Also, the shield is good. It's a 100% physical damage reduction shield. Always good. I don't have the required strength to use it. Or no. I have the strength for it. Yep. So th that's... Whoops. Yes. Fight with the shields, my friends. Two-hand it. Okay, that would be a horrible way to fight. But it's good to run down there if you get the Master Key, just to grab that shield. That's a good shield. Yep, I can't use a weapon effectively. But it's a good weapon if you're a Faith character. If you're a Cleric, I want to say, and you take the Master Key, run down and grab the sword. You should be able to use it, and it's a nice sword. Has a good move set. The stab is particularly good. And it's a holy weapon. Which is a kind of weapon you'll need later. Can't remember where it's Oh, holy right there. Auxiliary effects. Holy 120. And holy is a good thing to have for a weapon. Whereas, you know, weapons like this have nothing. But this is a good shield, Dragon Crush Shield. I don't think there's much better you can get right now. So, you know, it's all good. Uh, I don't have anything else to attune or equip. And uh, that's the beginning of the game. I hope you continue to join me on my quest of complete and utter failure at this game, because that's what it's going to be. As it's not a complete blind run, but I'm not completely good at this game. So I'll probably forget everything I learned when playing it on the PS3. Or maybe just some of it. Uh, if you want a blind run, probably not the Let's Player to look at. But if you want to just watch someone fail at Dark Souls and you don't really care, then it's all good. Other than that, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.